Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to McAdies Entertainment. I'm your host as always, Adam McGahee. Given we are hot off the tails of the season finale of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, it has fans such as myself clamoring more for some of that sweet space armored goodness. Mandalorians and clones are some of my favorite things in Star Wars, and I honestly think that all stems from an unhealthy obsession with Jango Fett as a kid, who is honestly the best of both worlds. As we know, Jango is one of the galaxy's most deadly bounty hunters during the prequel era and served as a template for the clone army that would eventually be responsible for the assassination of the Jedi. His talents were so formidable that in his prime, he was able to kill multiple Jedi with nothing but his bare hands. If it weren't for this notorious bounty hunter's DNA creating the universe's greatest soldier, the Star Wars storyline would have turned out much differently than we initially saw. Deadly as Jango was, someone would have had to have trained him the ways of combat so he would eventually grow into the notorious role and overall clone template. Similar to Din Djarin from the iconic Mandalorian series, Jango was a foundling who was founded and trained by a legendary Mandalorian warrior. This warrior was a man named Jaster Muriel, and this is his story. Who is he? Jaster Muriel was a human male born on the world of Concord Dawn, which was an agriculture-rich planet in the Mandalore sectors of the Outer Rim territories. In his youth, he served as a journeyman protector, which was similar to a police officer, that is until he was forced to kill a corrupt superior officer. Because of these actions, Jaster was charged with murder and was exiled from the planet. During this exile, Muriel came to join the Mandalorians where he became a legendary soldier in their ranks and eventually even earned the title of Mandalore, which was the traditional leader of the Mandalorian clans. Having been in Mandalorian culture for so long, Jaster saw how many of its citizens became dissatisfied with how savage their warrior culture had become. Using his title to bring positive change, Jaster instituted the Super Commando Codex, which was a new set of behavior rules for the Mandalorian people. In a nutshell, this guideline decreed that any Mandalorians who wished to fight would become highly paid soldiers and conduct themselves as honorable mercenaries therefore creating the base fundamentals of many Mandalorians in years to come that we would see as bounty hunters. This brought a sense of honor and duty to the Mandalorian people, bringing them galaxy-wide notoriety. However, Muriel's ideals would come into conflict with the new Mandalorians, who wished to reform the warrior ways altogether and become a peaceful, political-focused society. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Muriel also came against the infamous Tor Vizsla, who was against Jaster's moral reformation of their ways and wanted to continue living the ongoing brutal savage way of life. This then splintered into the group called Death Watch, which would eventually lead to civil war with Muriel and his Mandalorians. This war would go on for years and would eventually spill into Muriel's homeworld of Concord Dawn. Being pinned down by Death Watch, Jaster and his men would seek refuge on a nearby farm of a journeyman by the name of Fett. This Fett would be the father of a young Jango Fett, who was a mere boy at this time. Fett's family would provide shelter for the Mandos, who were eventually tracked down by Vizsla and his gang of savages. They would take the young Jango hostage, where they would beat his father and torture him, to try and get the location of Muriel. With his father not giving in to the pain, Django's mother would open fire on the men, demanding for them to let her family go. Pleading for his son to run, Fett and his wife would soon be brutally killed by Vizsla's men while the young boy ran into the nearby crop fields. He eventually ran into the arms of Jaster and the Mandalorians, where they saved him from his pursuers and ran to safety. Django would show the men a secret exit through some irrigation tubes, which would give them the leverage they needed to conduct guerrilla warfare on Vizsla's troops. During this battle, 
Muriel's men would be victorious, and the young Django would track down and kill the man who murdered his family. The child would be comforted by Muriel, who would adopt him as his own son and raise him to be a Mandalorian warrior. After years of intense training, Django would now be a young man with his own suit of armor, who would serve right alongside Jaster, who led a team of Super Commando mercenaries. They would be contracted for a mission on Corda 6, where they were recruited to rescue a security team that was held captive by local hostiles. Given their intel, Jaster was led to believe that this mission would be supposed easy credits. With this being one of the first missions that Django would help lead, Jaster turned to the young Mandalorian, where he told him to make him proud. He and Django led their own teams of troops to the planet, where they soon learned that their intel would be dead wrong. This all ended up being a setup by Death Watch, who had been steadily growing ever since their defeat those years prior on Concord Dawn. Django and Jaster's men would be quickly cut down, with both men fighting tooth and nail to survive against their heavily armed assassins. Jaster would come face to face with Vizsla, who cowardly hid inside of a tank, swearing revenge on what the Mandalorians did to him. Jaster was soon pinned down, where he requested an airlift from his comrade Montross. However, Montross ended up being corrupt as they come, and thought this was a great opportunity to let his leader die so he could take over the power vacuum that would be left behind with Jaster's death. Betrayed by his friend, Jaster screamed his name and opened fire on Vizsla's vehicle. However, this was no use as Vizsla hit him with a barrage of tank fire that crippled his legs, followed by multiple rounds to the chest. Witnessing this brutality, Django dived in to save his adoptive father, only to be saved by another Mando warrior who tried to prevent any more bloodshed. As the dust settled, Django approached the broken body of Jaster, where he removed his helmet and apologized for not having his back. With his final breath, Jaster took his son's hand and told him how proud of the warrior that he had become. Meeting back up with his brothers, Django came to confront Montross, who told him that he was there now to lead, with Jaster gone. Being fully aware of what this traitor did, the Mandalorians all rallied behind Django, who felt that he was their true ruler. Ousting Montross from their society, Django became their new ruler, and spent the next several years fighting against Death Watch, where he eventually tracked down and killed Vizsla, avenging Jaster Muriel's legacy. With this duty fulfilled, Django would eventually attain his iconic silver-plated armor and came into contact with Count Dooku, who would inevitably recruit him and his legendary skills for the clone army. And that is the full story of Jaster Muriel. Had it not been for the compassion that he showed Django Fett as a child, the boy would not have grown into the iconic bounty hunter and eventual clone template that he did. It honestly sheds so much more light on the Mandalorians and how honorable they are. For so long, I always thought of Django as kind of a cool looking bad guy, but this story shows just how tragic and honestly compelling of a character he truly is. He and Jaster's master and apprentice relationship seem more like a dark mirror of Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn's relationship, and like George Lucas would say, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Jaster was alluded to in Boba Fett's Chain Code in Season 2 of The Mandalorian, but honestly I would love to see more of these older Mando stories in either animation or live action. More than anything, I would love to know what you think. Did you know this about Jaster Muriel? Was there something I missed? What other stories should we cover? Sound off in the comments! Also be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed today's content, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell icon to be notified of all of our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the music in this video, it was all made by my boy Agnes. You can check out his Spotify in the link below. We also have a brand new merch store, which you can also check out in the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember you are awesome and loved. God bless, and I will see you in the next one.